food tells a story about history, community, culture, environment, and the economy. It also brings people together in a spirit of sharing, nourishment, and celebration. Maine's culinary roots run deep. Our stewardship of the environment and care for our land and waters, coupled with the hard work and dedication of Mainers, produces the freshest and highest quality shellfish, meats, fruit, veggies, and so much more. The pride we take in our state has positioned Maine as a global culinary destination. From organic farming, craft brewing, cheese making, oyster growing, it's no wonder why so many entrepreneurs, innovators, and foodies want to visit and move here. Thanks for watching The Maine Food Story, a new series and extension of Maine Life. And if you've seen Maine Life, you know that we love to eat, but also to highlight the people that make it all happen. So tonight we have seven courses or segments for you that will hopefully inspire you to try new things and new places. Bon appetit. Hi, I'm Frances Perkins, store manager at your North Berwick Hanover supermarket. This season on The Maine Food Story, we know you'll see a lot of recipes and meal ideas that will inspire you to head to Hennifer for the best ingredients, and we'll be here for you. We know what an important role food plays in our everyday lives. It can nourish us, comfort us, and make us feel strong and healthy. It brings us together as families and as a community. We hope you enjoy this episode of The Main Food Story, and we hope to see you at Hennifer when you're getting ready to create your next food story. Her name is Amber Lamke and she loves to break bread, literally. Here at Maine Grains in Skowhegan, a grist mill that Lamke founded and operates, they produce grains that go to farms all across the state to support them in their baking and culinary ventures. There's so much to what Maine Grains does. Amber's gonna tell us a lot more and take us on a tour of the mill that she started from the ground up. Hi everyone, my name's Amber. Welcome to Maine Grains. We're so glad to have you here visiting our mill. Here at Maine Grains, we are a grist mill. So we are processing locally grown organic and heritage grains that we source throughout the Northeast to make many of the products you see right behind me. So we specialize in stone milled flour, cornmeal, polenta, buckwheat flour. We process rye and oats and heritage grains that are being restored here in the Northeast. We launched Main Grains in September of 2012, so we're in our 10th year of business now. And really it came out of trying to solve a problem here in Maine. We were still growing grains in Maine for animal feed and for straw, but we missed some of the important machinery that makes it possible to eat grains. Uh, so the state of Maine didn't have any dehullers, for example, which you'll see inside machines that crack the husky coating off of an oat so that you can turn it into oatmeal. Uh, we lacked some of the machinery that makes it possible to take weed seeds out of grain. So this business plan really was born out of that problem solving. How do we grow and process grains in Maine that can be eaten by people and not just animals? So uh, what we've built here at Maine Grains really is the infrastructure that makes that possible. Our mill is set up in the old Somerset County Jail building. Uh, but one of the things that made it intriguing to us is that it's four stories tall. And in milling, that's advantageous. We can send grain to the top of the facility. We gravity feed grain through the machines on the way down, which saves energy. And it has worked remarkably well for us to launch this business. So we now utilize lots of different spaces here in the mill, not only for the mill, but to feature all these wonderful grains uh, on a menu that the local community can enjoy. And it's made a destination of this place where folks can visit the cafe, the creamery in our building, and some other shops located here on site as well. This mill and the business plan really grows out of the early work of the Maine Grain Alliance and founding the Kneading Conference. They were the early conversations back in 2007 about how to revive Maine's grain economy, and Tristan will be here to tell you more about that today. We're honored to be able to continue to support the work of the Maine Grain Alliance by donating 5% of the proceeds from this dry goods shop uh, to the good work and programs of MGA. I'm Tristan Noyes, Executive Director of the Maine Grain Alliance, and I want to thank uh, Maine Grains for sharing this opportunity to share a little bit about what we do. The Maine Grain Alliance began in 2007 with a community group in Skowhegan who gathered around a kitchen table to explore how they could help to create energy around a really important agricultural entity, which is grain. 
The result of that was the Kneading Conference, which is now in its 15th year and welcomes bakers and oven builders, researchers, chefs from all across the world. And we hope you'll join us at the 15th Annual Kneading Conference. Well, Tristan, thanks again for joining us in Skowhegan, and Connor, pleasure to have you. I mean, this is the best part of it all. Beer made with local grains, the scrape pizza made with local grains and local cheese, and of course, our brownies. Can't wait to try it. Thank you so much again for the tour. Tristan, it was great to talk to you it's about Main Grain Alliance and what you guys are doing, and cheers to Main Grains and cheers. MGA. All right, cheers. thanks. Food tells a story, but so does our home. We are traveling the state on this segment, introducing you to special spaces and local shops that are providing the tools that we need to succeed both in the kitchen and in our dining space to elevate our entertaining experience. Welcome to Scarborough, everybody. Suburban Home Outfitters is anything but ordinary, and you are in for quite the treat. Welcome everybody. We are here in Scarborough, Maine at Suburban Home Outfitters and uh, we're a furniture store that does a lot of furniture and home decor. We pride ourselves with finding real wood furniture, um, no particle boards, no MDFs uh, like some of the other big box stores do. All quality furniture and decent prices. In addition to the furniture, we have a lot of outdoor merchandise. We do a lot of the, the recycled or composite Adirondack chairs and tables. For interior, I mean everything from custom buoys and local artist work to signs and funny signs. There's a lot of funny signs around the store. We do have a lot of merchandise in here. We take our time trying to find the right stuff to bring to the store and different stuff. We, we try to find the out of the ordinary type pieces that you don't normally see anywhere else. So, you know, that, that's kind of what we do. One of our big categories, dining room tables and chairs, there's just tons and tons of sizes and uh, you name it, styles, there's just a lot to choose from. Many, many manufacturers. So we are so excited and ready to enjoy dining outside and this is an example of a great table to do so. Yep, great table, fully composite material, can stay outside year round through the snow, the rain, the sleet, <laughs> the ice. All the main elements. All the main elements. Well, come shop local, see uh, Jay, Sean, and Patty. Yeah, we're open seven days a week, 10 to 5. Yeah, enjoy. Cheers from home, everybody. Cheers from home. So in my house, I always have a few staples. Blueberries, of course, Brooks's favorite, vodka for mama, and lemons and limes. And if you add a little basil and club soda, you get the Blueberry Basil Vodka Club. In previous shows, we made our own drinks, but this isn't the Main Spirits app. It's just too good to change. Yeah, I don't want to change it. Connor, here's how it's done. So first, you're going to start with a glass of your choice, and you're going to squeeze about a half a lime in so that you can muddle your fresh blueberries and basil. This is the most important part. This is really going to activate those flavors. Next, you're going to add in your vodka of choice, and we went with Tito's. Then you're going to fill your glass all the way up to the top with ice. Make sure it's clear ice. Top it off with your favorite club soda and give it a good stir. Then add your garnishes. We went with a few blueberries on a toothpick and a basil leaf. Well, Connor, it smells good and it includes a few of my favorite things, but most importantly, right, is that clear ice. The clear ice, the good stuff. I mean, look how pretty this drink is with the clear ice. I'm glad my ice is clear. We gotta try it now, cheers. cheers. <laughs> We are now back here at the Miller's Table at Main Grains, and lucky me, I get to take one of their products and show you how they are turning it into a must-try at home meal using locally sourced ingredients. This beautiful spot we're standing in right now is the Miller's Table. It's located on the campus at Main Grains, and we are a cafe that specializes in sourdough breads and local foods. Erin, we know that you're excited to be here today and taste our delicious breads that are made with local flour. Our flour is available at Hannaford stores. It's great for home bakers. We have a lot of resources available online for people to check out and to start creating their masterpieces. Come on down to the Miller's Table at Main Grains where you will find fresh baked sourdough breads, wood-fired pizza made with a good crust pizza dough, soups made with locally sourced ingredients and perfect for dipping our delicious bread into. And don't forget to take home some of our fresh baked treats like cookies, hand pies, granola, 
And while you're on campus, you can stop by the Crooked Face Creamery and try some of her delicious cheeses. I first met Amy at the Skowhegan Farmer's Market, which is hosted right in our parking lot. She was a vendor that was just starting out selling homemade ricotta using whole milk. And we just grew a relationship. She's always been part of my story here in Maine. And today we will be featuring her raclette cheese and we'll be using it over a wood fire and on some fresh sourdough baked bread. Hello everybody, I'm Amy, the owner of Crooked Face Creamery. Welcome to my cheese shop. We are right next door to the Miller's Table. So I'm from Skowhegan. I, I grew up here on a dairy farm just down the road. Left and went to school and found my way back and uh, heard there was a lot going on in the local food movement and wanted to be involved and Amber was one of the first people I connected with. I've been making cheese now for 12 years and we make seven different styles of cheese here at Crooked Face Creamery. We make our award-winning whole milk ricotta, smoked ricotta, and a variety of herbed flavors, fresh mozzarella, cheese curds, a few washed rind cheeses, our buttercup Havarti, and our bonfire raclette. The synergy here is so great. The Miller's Table uses our cheeses on their menu, from their wood-fired pizzas to their sandwiches and occasional cheese boards, and we're gonna work with Eric today on putting together a beautiful raclette board for you guys. So on our board, we've got some local ingredients, uh, nice little fingerling potatoes, some fresh greens from Dig Deep Farm that I get right here at the farmer's market on Saturdays. We've got cured meats, prosciutto, um, soppressata, some pickles and pickle beets. Great, and don't forget about the yes. fresh baked sourdough bread. Yes, the key ingredient. <laughs> So it's really not hard at all. It's all in the ingredients. It's super easy. Here you are, ladies. Enjoy your appetizer. Thank you so and much. Stick around for some uh, chocolate rye brownies. Twist my arm. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Eric, You're so welcome. much. Enjoy. All right, let's dig in, Amy. I know how much you enjoy eating on camera, so yeah. I'm gonna let the viewers see how you Especially put it together. Especially really melty cheese. All yeah. the yumminess. All the yumminess. So I'm gonna so break just... this off. There. Oh my gosh. Uh, some little pea shoots, I think, will do. And then this is a pineapple um, mustarda. Yeah. And that on top. A little prosciutto. And maybe a little prosciutto. And then you can eat everything else kind of on its own. Yeah, on its own, yeah. It just sort of all complements each other. And so. it's a meal. And it's a meal. You've got all your... What else your... do you need, actually? Right. Right? Well, cheers. Cheers. Yeah. So, cheers. <laughs> Thank you so much. Eric, nice job. Wow. <laughs> Holy gosh. Great. I don't want to leave. <laughs> it's so easy to make, too. Mm -hmm. Gosh, get it together, Erin. I'm going to try it. Try it at home. <laughs> As we've been taught, it is a no-no to talk religion and politics at the dinner table. That's true. So each week instead, we're going to be bringing you a little main trivia. When my husband and Vanessa and I get together, it gets real competitive. So no Googling. We're going to put the answers on at the end of the show. Here we go. What four tribal nations or tribes make up the Wabanaki Confederacy? Maine was the blank state to join the Union. What star appears on Maine's flag? What was the name of the minor league baseball team that played its home games in Old Orchard Beach in the mid-1980s? Hi everybody, it's Ari with my mom, Chef Dory Mills, and I love ketchup. I put it on everything, but today we're, we're going to be trying some new seasonings. Yes, believe it or not, Ari, there are some other things out there other than ketchup. So let's tell them about our favorite sauces. Taste of Inspirations is one of our favorite lines. We love using the bourbon honey mustard to marinate pork chops in and the garlic ginger teriyaki on chicken. It's a great way to easily add a lot of flavor to your dish. Mom, don't forget about our everything bacon seasoning. We love it. We do. At the everything bacon seasoning, we sprinkle on avocado toast, bagels, and even scrambled eggs. Lastly, we have our Nature's Promise seasoning line, and you have to try the sweet potato seasoning mix. It's such a great smoky, sweet, heat combination. You're gonna love it. Tonight is all about trying something new. We're bringing the plus side to used car buying with Honda True Used. 10 model years of Honda vehicles. 
Plus, 100-day, 5,000-mile limited warranty. Plus, three-day exchange policy. Plus, one-year, 12,000-mile roadside assistance. Equals the better way to buy used. Don't just shop used. Shop Honda True used. At Aristyle, we specialize in bra fit. So we work with women on a one-on-one -on -one basis to provide them comfortable, well-fitting bras for their everyday life, as well as for those moments of fun. And although someone might look at this store and what we do and think, oh, it's just a lingerie store, I challenge you to think about what lingerie is in completely different terms. Because for a woman, it's the first layer she puts on her body every day. And it's going to set the tone for not only how she goes about her day, but how she feels about herself. And that's always going to have a ripple effect in her life and the lives of her loved ones and those that she reaches every day. Maine is a lifestyle destination. With over 3,500 miles of coastline, lakes, mountains, and four season recreation, there's a reason Maine is known as vacation land. At Harcourt's waterfront and fine properties, we're the Maine real estate lifestyle experts. If you're thinking about moving to Maine, we can help you not only find a property, but the perfect home to fit your lifestyle. Contact us today to make your dream of living in vacation land come true. Harcourts, we're with you all the way. Hi, this is Jaeger from Berlin City Auto Group. We believe that our community is stronger when we face challenges together. Over the past year, we were able to raise $71,000 for 25 schools across New England. These grants went to special teachers and classrooms to support a variety of needs. Some as simple as clothing and boots to outdoor activity center and even the self-sustaining lettuce farm. To learn more and nominate your school, visit BerlinCity.com. Hey everybody, welcome back. So if you ever watch Main Life, you know that Aaron and I get to eat a lot of great food at a lot of great restaurants. But do you know a whole lot about the chefs that own these restaurants? Maybe not. So today we're here in Jefferson, Maine at the home of Chef John Mary and Jen Baca. They own the River House restaurant in Damascata. We're gonna go in and I think they're making us some breakfast. So let's go see what's cooking. Hi, come on Hi. in. Hi, how are, how you, are guys? you? Welcome. It's good to see you. Good to see you too. I brought you guys awesome. some ruckus donuts from Rockland. Ooh. You're gonna like those, Freya. <laughs> Looks good, doesn't it? Favorite. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I do when I open the box too. Yummy. <laughs> Every morning at like six o'clock, she wakes up and all she wants is pancakes. Don't blame her. So. Uh, and what I did I see figured, on my so, way up? I saw. Yeah, I'm boiling some sap out back on the fire. Freya, you want to make some pancakes? Ready? Is it our secret weapon? Then I won't look at it. If it's secret, I'll keep my eyes closed. What is that? Is that whole wheat flour? Whole wheat flour. Okay. There we go. Very good. So we've got local butter, local wild main blueberries. Ready? I'm going to move it there and you're going to dump it. Yeah, look at, oh cool. It's not about being fancy at home. You're at home. You know, I want that homey food, like I'm a sucker for a casserole, like, you know, like one pot again. Oh my gosh, so good. <laughs> That's amazing. About to dive into these homemade wild Maine blueberry pancakes with local maple syrup. Thank you for inviting me over for breakfast. Yeah. And you guys, Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can see why you would want to eat these all day long. So you've had not only experiences that you've actually um, worked with Marge and Joe at Dragonfly Cove Farm, right? Mm -hmm. Or on, yeah, on the farm with them. Yep. You worked as a chef in restaurants down in Boston for Ken Warringer, yep. who people might know. Working for Ken, that was 15, 16 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I was fresh out of college. Yep. That like really shaped me in how I've grown. Um, it's a really fast pace. Yeah, but also like mentalities and thought processes, you know, part of that is like stuff outside of the kitchen and, and outside of like food, just like life in general. Like, you know, I kind of, I basically threw away like a golden opportunity um, as part of my story with like drinking and everything. Mm -hmm. um, and then so like I bounced 
around a couple places in, in Boston, working for Ken, and then eventually I worked for Tony Maws, who was a Ken Oranger product. Mm -hmm. um, and then, but it was like, I basically burned every bridge down there and ruined a whole career. I've done that show um, a couple times. <laughs> yeah, you know, and it's like, but you know, you could learn I change from those Exactly, exactly, right? so that's like kind yeah. of, you know, I moved back home, I grew up in Bath, I moved back home to Bath yep. to do the like, geographical cure, if you will. I was very fortunate to have some of the people around me at that point in my life who kind of like steered me in the right direction and really saved me. Well, thank you so much again. Absolutely. Really appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Thank you for having me be part of this. All right, cool. Can't wait to go back to your restaurant. Hey everyone, we're finishing off the night here at the Miller's Table. We had a little history lesson from Connor. We got to see Aaron enjoy the raclette. And now we're here for our sweet treat, which we hear is both delicious and Amber tells us it's healthy. Here's how it's made. <laughs> so we're back in the kitchen at the Miller's Table and I'm gonna show you how to make a chocolate rye brownie. I love rye, it's one of my favorite grains. Uh, it's high fiber, it's kind of all the rage right now. And it pairs perfectly with chocolate because it's got a naturally sour, nutty flavor that pairs really nicely with chocolate's bitter and sweet notes. This recipe we're gonna make today comes from Southern Ground, our friends down at Carolina Ground Mill. Uh, Jennifer Lapidus was starting her mill in North Carolina at the same time we were starting Main Grains, and she and I have done a lot of sharing over the years. So we're thrilled to support her in her new cookbook, and we'll be making her chocolate rye brownie. So I've got the brown sugar and white sugar in the bowl. We're gonna add our eggs one at a time. We want each egg to get incorporated. And we want the sugar and eggs to start to look nice and creamy in texture before we add the melted butter and chocolate. Okay, there we go, it's all incorporated. Let's have a look. This batter is gonna go into a quarter size sheet pan that we use here at the Miller's table. This makes it easy to cut nice slices. So this batter will go into the oven at about 350 degrees and bake for 25 minutes. Most pastry benefits from a little bit more salt than you might think. It really offsets the flavor of the rye and the chocolate. And it comes out looking like this. So now we're gonna have Heather and Matt try one of our warm chocolate rye brownies out front, warmed up in the wood-fired oven and served with Gifford's ice cream. Wow, you must enjoy that, Matt. Well, it's absolutely delicious. And it's healthy, too. <laughs> Come on by and check out the Miller's Table. And if you can't make it in, make sure you check out their website for all the recipes for all their other delicious sweet treats. Cheers. <laughs> Thanks for watching this week's episode. We hope you feel inspired to go out and create your own main food story. Follow us on Instagram, Main Food Story, or on Facebook, Main Life Media. Thank you to our sponsors, New Center Maine. It's PJ time. Say goodbye. From Moosey, Brooks, and the rest of us, we'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>